Um, so I, I started making little mnemonic devices to, uh, to remind myself. Uh, and the way I remember things is to make them rhyme, because uh, I'm a compulsive songwriter. And uh, <coughs> uh, so instead of writing little songs, I just wrote little poems. I thought that would be uh, easier and also less distracting. Um, and also, it's just not a really great idea to write four-line songs. It's actually harder to remember four-line songs than it is four-line poems. Did you did you try to make any of them into songs? No. <laughs> uh, writing poems focusing on two-letter words rather than, say, four-letter words. Uh, allowed me to have, uh, A, the central conceit of the book is that you can play Scrabble with it, and uh, uh, B, I was, I was able to use as a template uh, one of my favorite poems and one of the most popular poems uh, in, uh, for the youth of America. Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her father 40 wax, and when she saw what she had done, she gave her mother 30 41. Now, is it father first or mother first? I can never remember. I think there are different versions. Uh, but that was, for me, that was the template of the whole book. I mean, I like Edward Gorey and Edward Lear. Uh, and I think it probably seems more like Shel Silverstein. But really, that Lizzie Borden poem is the template for the book. In that it's um, a folk poem, or that it's a children's poem, or that it's a murderous poem? Uh, all, th <clears throat> all three. Um, the Lizzie Borden nursery rhyme poem seemed to be a good template for me because for the f in the first place, it's well known enough, so I'm not going to forget it myself. Um, and since nobody forgets it, it's probably in a rhythm that people find easy to remember, so it's a good rhythm for me to copy. Um, also, I knew that I could actually use that particular poem in my book, uh, just refer to it, and the people would understand that there was a reference happening. Because um, I think outside of the rhyme, people don't actually know very much about Lizzie Borden at all, uh, including the police. <laughs> there, wasn't, uh, there wasn't all that much to know. She was a, a young teenager, and nothing had ever happened to, really. Uh, if her parents hadn't been killed, probably no one would ever have heard of her. As with my songwriting, I don't feel like that there is a central persona of Stephen Marriott who is the understood voice behind everything, who is the godlike narrator. Um, I don't really believe in God or narrators, so um, I wouldn't want to try to be one. Um, so I may write in character or not, but it doesn't occur to me that I'm writing in my character, because I don't especially have one. Um, I, I did try to have the continuing saga of Ma and Pa, who are themselves two-letter words. Uh, and there's also the continuing saga of Vampire Dog. And there's an assortment of sort of transgendered or gender fluid characters who kind of illustrate the pronouns for us or illustrate the uh, deviations from the pronouns. A couple of the words that really jumped out to me in this, which I guess goes back to the question of speaker. So there were three words that really stood out, which were tranny, skanking, and fat, PH, which, which seemed like this different sort of hip in quotation marks points. Did you feel like you were working in different dictions as you were writing? Or uh, well, one of the two-letter words is yo, 
which requires uh, an informal voice. Um, I, I, um, there is a person pictured on the cover of the book saying yo. Uh, this is certainly not me. It's a, it's a farmer in a rural area who in 20 years will be saying yo. Um, so I, I tried to use a, a variety of registers in a number of ways, as with 69 Love Songs, where I tried to have as many voices as possible, both literally singing voices and character voices. Uh, and continuity in the sense that in Midsummer Night's Dream, maybe although there's three different social universes, they all co they all touch each other somewhere. Uh, you might just have to have your head turned into the head of an ass to find that out, but um, once you do, you realize that there is continuity. I wrote the whole book, and then Roz just illustrated the whole book. Yeah. So uh, she didn't um, she didn't have any instructions for me, and I also didn't have any instructions for her. Uh, I got back all the uh, illustrations at the same moment, and my only reaction was, "Wow, that's brilliant! Um, you misspelled artisanal." But. Mm, Everyone misspells artisanal, so it's not a big deal. I happen to be a former copy editor. I was wondering what it was, I mean, did you work with an editor on this? Was, what was editing a book of poems like versus writing songs? Is it a different sort of revision process? Uh, in songwriting, there's not usually uh, any social aspect to revising a song. Uh, I sit in a gay bar with a cocktail in my hand and a pen in the other and I write a song and then six months later I may still be writing the same song but I, I come back to it and I revise it myself. Uh, I, I say, oh that won't fit on the folk album or wait, what if I put in a dragon here and take out the Seagram's building? Yes, it'll fit on the folk album. Uh, so I can do that myself but if uh, if I find myself writing a book of poems, then uh, I have an editor at Norton, and they know what they're talking about, which is kind of scary, because I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, there's two poems, uh, the M and N dash poems, M and N. Uh, I could have just used the names of the letters, M and N, but what fun would that be? So uh, I gave Roz something to do by having the two different dashes. Uh, anyway, okay. M dashes, this just in, are used to interrupt a thought. The use of them is subtle. Ha! And it cannot be taught. You notice that I had to actually read it out of the book. The ones that stayed uh, pretty much unedited, I can recite with no problem, like ah uh, ah. Uh. Um. But 
yeah, the, the more back and forth there was in the editing, the less I can actually recite it from memory, because I remember the earlier versions, which is what happens to me on stage in songwriting. If there's multiple versions, I remember all of them equally well. So um, when I'm standing at the, at the Lincoln Center in front of the subscribers, I may not remember the correct version. I may remember the one about the Yiddish mama who doesn't exist anymore in the current version of the song, and everyone will be totally puzzled. Um, so I have a music stand in front of me when I sing. Uh, so I need to do that at readings as well, it seems. So in, in songwriting, I'm free to dictate the relationship between the meter and the prosody and the melody, uh, but in poetry there's no pr uh, prosody in the same sense and there's no melody, really. And so I, I was able to deviate once in a while from my strict adherence to uh, Lizzie Borden and her rhythm, like so, Z, X-I, Z, 14th Greek letter, or 14th one in a line, like the great, 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 great grandson of the son of Frankenstein. That's something I would be very unlikely to do in a song. Uh, but I wouldn't have to do it in a song because I wouldn't have to be saying something true. Whereas in describing what the 14th Greek letter is, I have to do it accurately. So um, in general, did you feel that this book was more beholden to truth? Yeah, I felt like I, I felt I had a responsibility to, for example, be correct about M and N, and uh, specify which Greek letter and which Hebrew letter and uh, something about them. And my original entry for Pi specified who named it and in what year, which I've carefully gef carefully now forgotten. Um, so I, I think the book was a lot geekier before Norton got to it, actually. <laughs>